Hello and welcome to PSD Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak and today I'm going to talk about swatches in Photoshop. The swatches panel is very useful if you know how to work with it. There's a couple of features which I'm going to go through today to make sure that you will be comfortable working with swatches. So first of all, where can you find this panel? It's under the window menu. So there's swatches. And once you open it, you can put it wherever you want. You can drag it out, have it as a floating panel or position it somewhere here on the right. And then it becomes a docked panel. What I would like to do first of all is show you how to uh, change the view options for the swatches panel. This is something you will find under the drop down menu. So the panel options will be here. And you can see these four ways of showing the swatches. You can show them as small thumbnails like that. You can show them as large thumbnails. And whenever you have uh, thumbnails like this, you just hover over one of them and you will get their name. Uh, we can also choose small list. In this case, we have the text already written next to the swatches and we can also choose large list. Of course, the more if you want to see more then the best is to choose small thumbnails. And in this case, we can see all the basic swatches that we have in Photoshop. If you already pl played around with swatches, you can always reset the swatches by going again to the drop down menu and choose uh, reset swatches. And I'm just going to click on OK and don't save. So that's actually the original set of uh, swatches you will have in Photoshop. How can you delete from these? Uh, quite easy. You can select one swatch and just drag and drop it onto the trash icon if you just want to get rid of one specifically. But if you want to remove all of them, then it's better to go to the preset manager. So you go to again the drop down and choose preset manager. And then here you can uh, select even all of them. Let me just select all of them and I choose delete. And then if I click on done, our swatches panel will be empty. Let's just say in this case, I would like to create a set of colors uh, based on this photo in uh, which I took in Venice. So it will be like the colors of Venice. So just to pump up the colors a bit, I'm going to use an adjustment. Uh, the, my favorite one to increase the saturation is vibrance adjustment. So I'm going to use that and increase vibrance and maybe a bit of the saturation. And that's, I think, what all I needed. So now we can pick colors from the image and we will learn how to create a new swatch. So what I'm going to do first of all is selecting the eyedropper tool. And with this tool, you can pick colors from the image. And it's good to know that you can change the way the cursor looks like uh, for the eyedropper. As you can see, my one looks like a little crosshair, uh, but we can go to the preferences and choose cursors. And here we can decide whether we want precise or standard cursors. You can see already eyedropper is a good example where it will switch from the standard eyedropper icon to the precise cursor. I prefer to use with this one. But by the way, if you prefer to have the original cursor and in just some cases you would like to use the crosshair, then you can go to the same settings and choose standard, click on OK, and then you will see the, the cursor, the default one. And if you want to switch to the crosshair, you just press caps lock. And while caps lock is turned on, you will be in precise mode. And if you press caps lock again, it switches back to the normal mode. I prefer to use uh, the precise all the time. So I'm going to keep it uh, selected. Let's just pick a nice red color from one of these parts of the image. And um, once we pick the color, we will see it here in the foreground color as the selected color. If I click on it, we will go into the color picker um, dialog box where we can see exactly the values of this color. We can see it in hue, saturation, brightness, RGB, LAB or lab and CMYK. Plus we can also see the web uh, number of this font or the code for the web. There's two indicators uh, which can help us to decide whether we want this color or not. For example, this little box here uh, shows that this is not a web safe color. 
So if AR use this on a website, it might not be exactly the same on all uh, computers. So if I, for example, go up here to a brighter color, we will have another notification as well that this color is not uh, print safe. So it's out of gamut for printing. Now, of course, that depends on what type of printer you use, but this will help you to find a color which is closer to a print safe color. And if we click on that little box, that will uh, pick us a web safe color. And most of the time you will find that, that either print or safe will have an alert message. So it's hard to please both uh, web and safe colors. But of course you can find things like that. For example, black and white will be easy to use in both. And um, the other colors will be a little bit more difficult to uh, adjust to make sure that it's good for both media. Now, once you have a color, and let me just go back to my original pick color. I just clicked on it. And um, if I want to save this, I can add to the swatches. So very simple, add to swatches. And I can give it a name. And I'm going to just simply call this Venice uh, Worm 1. And I saved it. And let me click on OK. Now I'm going to pick another color, this one. And instead of going through the color picker dialog box, I can also just simply click on the swatches panel. And that will also save uh, the color. I'm just going to call this swatch one now. Uh, the same way I can pick more colors, pick another color, click save. Then we can uh, define another color from the house, save. And then let's just um, click on the water as well. That could be a good color as well to save. Although it's quite similar to this color here. Uh, so maybe I just uh, undo that or just drag and drop it on the trash. And let's just think about what else can we save. Maybe we can save this as a, well as a color. So let's just say these are the colors from this photo, which I would like to save as a set. Now, what we can do is save it in two different ways, these swatches. We can go to the drop down menu and choose save swatches or save swatches for exchange. The swatches, the save swatches will create a file which will be, you will be able to use in Photoshop, while the exchange file will, um, will, will, will work with Illustrator and InDesign as well and other Adobe applications, by the way. So if we choose Save Swatches, let's see what happens. I'm going to call this Ven Venice, save, and I'm going to save them also for exchange and save it again as Venice. And if, I, if we have a look at my desktop, let's just see the desktop, there's an ACO and an ASE file. This is the exchange file and the other one is the Photoshop file. If I reset the swatches, so I go to reset swatches and I click on OK and then I decide to have these swatches again, the previous ones, I can either go to my uh, desktop and double click on that uh, swatch and it will be added uh, to the set that I already have or I can go to preset manager, I can select all of these and delete them and then load and choose the ones that I need open and I can already see them. So that's a fast way to again go back to those swatches that you would like to work with. There are many other color options in Photoshop which I'm going to talk more about in the following tutorials in this mini series. So I hope you found this useful and if you want to learn more about colors in Photoshop make sure you join me next time. Thanks a lot for your attention.